I want to start off by saying that this is not an anti post-secondary education speech. In, instead, what I'd like everybody to do is just think about what you're doing in your own lives right now, your genesis from high school to college to your professional life, your career, and that of your children or people that may be, if you don't have your own children, people in your community. Because I think that's really what I would like to get at in this discussion. I've spent 30 years in healthcare, I've interviewed many people at different levels of positions. And in healthcare, everybody thinks, first of all, nurses and physicians. And that's a small part of it. But in healthcare, we also have, we have a microcosm of society. We have plumbers, we have plasters, we have secretaries, we have finance people, we have certified public accountants. We've got a multitude of people who work in healthcare. And when you work around people, you really start to learn a lot about them and a lot about what motivates people every day. And through the course of my 30 years, I've come across many people who are in their second and third careers, who've spent a boatload of mom and dad's money sitting in college for maybe a couple of years, deciding that really wasn't what they wanted to do, took a couple of years off and break, did some different jobs, and then found something else that they liked. But really, at what point in their life did they decide that? And what was the motivating factor that made them sit back and think, what do I want to do and how am I going to get there? Because if you think about society in general, I believe, especially in the United States, that there is, a, there is a bias towards secondary education. Anybody who's had the misfortune of being ill and had to have the, the uh, terrible rigors of watching daytime television can attest to the baby formula commercials who come on and the first things that they ask, because I know when my wife and I were raising our children, and we were with our other couples that were friends, first thing we asked is, what are you doing about college savings? Because that's what you do, right? That's your icebreaker for a conversation. Not. But if you watch television, that's what we should be doing, because before the children are even out of diapers, we're saving for money. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. But I'm saying I believe that there's a predisposition and a bias to once you graduate high school, you need to go to college. And that may not be right for everybody. Case in point number two. If you watch television, and I'm not a big TV watcher, but on the rare occasion that you do, if you see a Votech commercial, typically who is the person that they use for the Votech commercials and what are the undertones, or the uh, commentaries that they put at the bottom of the commercial? They're typically older people, by older I'm saying people in their 20s or 30s, and they usually throw it out there that VA approved which the marketing term for that is, is if you don't know what you want to do in life and you're in the military and you're looking for a job, we can help you do that. So <clears throat> during the course of my career, and then also as a parent, I think, that, and as a school board member here in the Baldwin Whitehall School District, my term that I served, I think we do a lot of structured gearing towards helping children to get to college. And I don't think that that's the right path for everybody. It is for some, it's not for others. And I'll tell you why. 80% of the people, the children that enter ninth grade in high school, statistically have no idea what they want to do whenever they get out of school. But yet, when you think about it, those four formative years in high school are when we begin college preparatory courses and we really begin to, to prepare the children for post-graduation, either academics or if they choose to, to go into the workforce or the military. But yet 80% of them in ninth grade statistically have no idea what they want to do. And if you think about that, when you were 18 years old or 15 years old or 14 years old and somebody looked at you and said, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? Because now you need to make a decision because in four years, you're not at home anymore and I'm not putting you on the school bus. What do you want to do with the rest of your life? And let's make a decision because there's a lot of money that hinges on your decision. It's a very, very awesome decision for a young kid to make. Secondly, the majority of children who enter, enter college first year, 56% of them will not finish their degree within six years. That's statistically proven. 56% will not finish in six years. 80% okay. of kids who enter college for the first time will change their major at least one time. So 56% aren't going to graduate in six years, and 80% of them are going to change their major once. 
the average child comes out of college right now in the United States with $35,000 in debt. That's the average. And if anybody has a child in college, we all know that that average is probably a little bit understated because I want to send my kids to that school. $35,000 in debt. 27% of all college loans end up in default. 27%. That's a huge number. And that's not fair to anybody, and it is a societal problem. So I don't portray to have all the answers to how we're going to fix this solution. But I have a couple thoughts that I'd like to share, and I think that it's something that we're not going to fix within this building. Our teachers, our school systems are overtaxed as it is with regulations, with performance tests, and with state-mandated guidelines that there's not another minute in a day that we can cram something else into it. It's just not going to happen. Secondly, with budgetary constraints in every school district, we can't afford to develop three more career tracks for children. So we already have a VoTech track, which we do very well at at Baldwin Whitehall. We have a lot of children to go to VoTech. We have a, an academic preparatory track, and we can't come up with a third one, I'm sure, because it would be very costly, number one. Number two, there's not enough time in a day. So my proposal is, I think instead of looking at our children when they're entering high school or ready to graduate from high school and saying to them, what do you want to do for the rest of your life and getting that story I'd look back at us, what we should probably ask is not what do you want to do, but what makes you happy? What is it that makes you want to get out of bed every day? If a child likes to tinker with wood or likes to plumb or likes to play with electrical gadgets, that kid's probably not going to like sitting in a class learning to be a CPA. I may be wrong, and I'm sure there's some exceptions. But if you think about it, the question I think should be, what is it that you want to do? What drives you to get out of bed every day? Because if anybody's ever gotten out of bed and not liked what they do, it makes a very difficult life. Number two, I think the next thing that we should do is partner with, with organizations in our communities. There are many, many, many successful plumbers, builders, architects, police officers, firefighters, every occupation you could think of, we have represented here in our community. People who are senior executives who get to the point in their career that they don't know what they want to do with the next step of their life, they go to people that are called career coaches. And you pay this person a lot of money to have them ask you questions about what you really like, what turns you on in your job, how much money you'd like to make, or where would you like to go next, and the career coach will help you make decisions. It costs a lot of money. So why couldn't we, as a public school district, emulate that same process here with people in our own community? How we can do that, many different ways. But how I propose is if a child's in their eighth grade or ninth grade, because I don't think that it could start too young. And if a child has expressed an interest, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to go into ninth grade and, and I really like, I like numbers. I think I want to be a, a mathematician or I think I want to be an accountant. Surely somebody in the community, because it does take a village, as the title of these talks are, it takes a village. Somebody in our community could function as the career coach for those kids. Because there's probably not just one. We have 4,100 children in the school district. Probably not one child that just wants to do that. I'm sure there are many more. <clears throat> so if, if we could bridge the gap and provide different resources, different opportunities, and different experiences while children are still going through high school, we may accomplish a couple goals. We may, number one, have them channel their efforts in high school to things that are going to gear them to really what drives them. And we all know that if something drives you internally, you're going to succeed at it, and you're going to put forth your best effort to excel. I'm not a school teacher. I know many school teachers who will tell you, if a kid's disconnected in class, they're not going to produce, and they're probably going to not engage and may even be disruptive. Okay, we need to find what engages them. <clears throat> Secondly, if we, going through the, the process, um, can get these children, number one, make them or help them find a job that they're happy at. 
Number two, we're going to save them and their parents probably a boatload of money down the road. If you think about, like I said, 35%, or I'm sorry, $35,000 in debt. 80% changing their, their major, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but a lot of times that comes with a couple extra classes you have to take, depending on where you're at in your four-year degree, if you're in an undergrad, where you're at and you change, you could be adding on several other classes. And at about $600 a credit average, that adds up pretty quickly. So you could save them a lot of money. We potentially could save the federal government and the state FIA system the aggravation of going through default. We could certainly save the children once they graduate the problems that occur both legally and financially with their credit scores of being in default, because we all know the problems that that brings. So I don't know that I have the answers to everything that's going to make you know, the, the world the land of milk and honey. But what I do know is I think we can do better. And when you look at the numbers, I think there's certainly something that we can do as a community to not only help the children, but also help our community as well. I don't know the last time anybody has called and tried to find somebody to come to your house to do a home repair. It's not the easiest thing to do. Trying to find somebody, number one, trying to get them to come to your house, number two, and then trying to get them to finish the job, number three, is very difficult. There just aren't a lot of people who've gone into the trades. And when you think of spe specifically about our area, and I hate to use this number because it makes me re feel really old, but in the mid-70s, which was 40 years ago, most people in the, the uh, community followed your, your parents or a friend or a relative into the steel mills because that's where the jobs were. And we had a plethora of people who were tradesmen and things along those lines. Switch that, fast forward, we went into the high-tech area here in Pittsburgh. And high-tech jobs are still in demand, but it's such a rapidly changing environment that what's in demand today when I start college may not be four years from now whenever I graduate. Technology changes so quickly and so does the job market. So as I said, I'm not here to change our thought processes towards secondary education, towards higher education, but I think that there's certainly some form of a bias. And, and when you go to graduation parties this spring, because we're now approaching the, the time very quickly of rigatoni and chicken every Friday or Saturday night at a graduation party for at least a month until the middle of July. Anybody who is, is in that cycle of graduation parties, think about some of the first things that you ask to graduate. Usually congratulate them. And the next question is, where are you going to school? Because it's a given that they're going to go to college. But that may not always be the case. I saw it a lot on the school board, and it was refreshing here. A couple of years ago, we, we had implemented some, some uh, diagnostic testing for the earlier years for children to do some different vocational testing and things along those lines to help them develop a career path, which I think was great. But that's just our district. I think that it really needs to be spread to other districts as well because it really does impact every one of us, the whole, the whole process. So as I said, I'm not going to fix it all, but I'd like, like you to think about that. Um, I think there's certainly opportunities in the public-private sector. We can't always look for government to solve all of our problems, and the school district is a, is a government agency. But we can't look at them to solve it all. So collectively, as community members who offer different experiences, different vocations, and different walks of life, how could we use our talents to help the younger children growing up in the school district to succeed and to optimize their abilities to really have a productive and fruitful life? That's the question I think we need to ask. And I think as a group, we can accomplish that for the betterment of all. So thank you very much. Thank you for listening and thank you for the opportunity to speak.